Welcome to Sunday Politics, coming to you live from Channels Television's global headquarters in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Kayo Deokikulu. Well, just less than two weeks to the end of 2021, a very eventful year politically, if you ask me. The nation has witnessed one of the most difficult governorship elections in its history, and that's according to INEC. In security, we've seen the change of service chiefs at the start of the year, as well as several wins and losses. Now, one of those losses is the killing of 38 people by bandits across three villages in Giwa local area of uh, the local government area of Kaduna State between yesterday and this morning. Now, the Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Mr. Samuel Arwan, lists the villages to include Karumfawa, Marke, and Reheya. He added that the bandits also burned several houses, trucks, and cars, along with agricultural produce at various farms. So that's for security, I mean, one of those losses. Over at the National Assembly, we've also seen landmark legislations, one of which is electoral bill. Now, we've been counting down to the president's decision on that bill here on Channel's television, which the National Assembly transmitted to him on November the 19th. And going by the Nigerian Constitution, which demands that the president sign any bill transmitted to him within 30 days, it would seem time is now up for the president to signify whether he has assented to the bill or not. Well, this is one document that is expected to smooth in our election process and also introduce the use of technology. And seeing that we are more than a year away from the next general election in 2023, and with the president's promise to bequeath to Nigerians an improved electoral process, all eyes are definitely on this one. Well, the options before the president were to either sign the bill or withhold his asset. The National Assembly can then choose to pass the bill into law in spite of the president's rejection or reintroduce it for another round of legislative process. So uh, a couple of options ahead for us. But while we continue to wait on that one, let's tell you that President Mohamed Buhari is back in Nigeria after a three-day trip to Istanbul, where he participated in the third Turkey-Africa Partnership Summit. Well, the president arrived this afternoon via the official BBJ aircraft, which has been under repairs and upgrade for months. It was received upon arrival at the presidential wing of the Namdia Ziko International Airport Abuja by the Chief of Staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Bos Mustafa, among others. Well, in Istanbul, he also met uh, with the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan before participating in the summit, where he spoke on concrete partnerships and terrorism in Africa, global climate change, amongst other issues. He was accompanied on that trip by his wife, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, as well as the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Defense, FCT, Health, Agriculture, Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, as well as the National Security Advisor and the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, that's the NIA. So tonight on the program, we unpack, as it were, the president and his entourage bags as uh, they return from Turkey. And on the program, we are joined by the president's media aide, Mr. Garaba Shehu. He is the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity. He joins us via Zoom uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. Garaba Shehu, thank you for joining us on the program. And let me just begin by welcoming you and by extension, the president and his entourage back from the trip to Turkey. And naturally, as you know, with you know, trips such as this, a lot of Nigerians would want to unpack the bags and to see the gains from this trip. So what more can you tell us uh, regarding that? Well, thank you for giving us this opportunity and to say to you that uh, the gains will come. And uh, so many of them, uh, um, don't forget that uh, at the center of all of the president's engagements in Turkey is the issue of securing Nigerians, making Nigeria safe. Turkey, with their experience, with the advancement they have made in weapons manufacture, in technology, and all of that, they have handled matters as we are dealing with now for a long time. So there is a lot we will learn from them. And uh, from the engagement with the Turkish president, Erdogan, it is clear that we have got that partner we needed who would uh, help Nigeria. They are donating equipment, 
we are buying some. And uh, we hope uh, as soon as we go into the new January, some activity will start in this. In addition to that, of course, we had engagements in the area of trade and investment. A number of investors are coming in, uh, particularly with, you know, with, with the with the FCT here in Abuja. Uh, one funny thing happened some time ago when President Erogan came here. He was accommodated in one of the best hotels in the city. This is about two years ago. And his conclu- at, at the point of departure, he was saying, you don't have hotels in Abuja. I'm going to build a hotel for you. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of commitment that you have from that uh, leadership. So we're expecting commitments in that regard, five-star hotels, conference centers, uh, real estate, uh, housing, and all of that. Now, in addition to that also, they are coming in with the deluge of uh, schools, uh, hospitals, uh, in order that we get the best, you know, that the world can offer. Uh, These are some of the things that uh, have been clinched and uh, they will begin to flow in and the moment uh, the conclusions are reached on what to do and how to proceed. So you've referenced security, trade, and um, you even talked about education. So if we were to put a figure uh, to these gains, I mean, you understand how a lot of people look forward to seeing something regarding that. Is there a figure that you can put in terms of amount, a billion dollars or more, to this uh, you know, benefit that we'll be getting from Turkey? No, uh, I cannot give figure now. We are expecting a defense team from Turkey in January. Uh, What has happened over there with our teams, our heads of security and defense uh, intelligence agencies, is that uh, something of a needs assessment was carried out. What is it that Nigeria really needs in order to deal with the situation of insecurity? So it's up to them that uh, they give whatever they want. But for us, we are interested in buying in this uh, world uh, today. There are countries you go to cash at hand, they won't sell weapons uh, to you. So we are already engaging with them on, 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 on warships. Now, the issue, the supply of drones is particularly exciting uh, for Nigeria because Turkey has accomplished so much and the world is witness to how effective Turkish drone technology is in recent uh, battles that they have fought on the side of uh, Afghan, of, of, uh, of uh, some Asian countries and some places in Africa. Uh, so regarding the benefits and the gains from this trip, you know, for a lot of people, uh, they, they will try to maybe project based on what we have seen in the past. And I mean, the president has been on some of these trips in recent times. In fact, in the past 90 days, uh, the president has visited uh, countless, not countless, over seven countries. And, you know, he was in New York uh, September the 19th uh, for the 76th session of ONGA. And um, after that, in October, uh, we saw the president uh, visit uh, Ethiopia. That was for Prime Minister Ahmed's inauguration. And that was essentially uh, to sort of felicitate uh, with the country at that time. And then October the 25th, mm-hmm. uh, we saw uh, the president's visit to Saudi Arabia for an investment conference. Then COP26 on October the 31st, that's the, you know, the climate change con- con- um, conference in Glasgow, Scotland. Then November the 10th, the president was in France, where he met the French president, also attended that peace forum. Uh, November the 13th, again, the president was in South Africa for the Intra-Africa Trade Fair. So it's been quite a lot. In fact, December the 2nd, just this month, he was in UAE for the Expo in Dubai. And then December the 16th, which is this recent one uh, for that uh, Turkey-Africa summit. So, I mean, these are some of the recent trips, specifically the ones we've seen in three months. So looking across these ones, um, uh, Mr. Garbashev, can you tell Nigerians what have been the outcomes from those ones as, as perhaps a foretaste to what to expect from this recent trip to Turkey? Well, uh, let me say that each of these trips you have mentioned had a designated purpose. And none of them was classified as being a junket or, or just uh, some holiday trip. There is a purpose. And when you talk, take note of the fact that the entire world had been shut down for nearly two years, and it has reopened. And uh, why don't you make an early start? 
so that, as they say, the early bird catches the worm. We, we, we go there in order that we, we, are, we are a part of the international community. When you mention places like the United Nations or the Peace Forum, Paris Peace Forum, unless if you are not in North Korea, or a pariah state of sorts, you can't stay away from the international community. And, and for God's sake, the president of Nigeria is number one envoy of the country. So therefore, he symbolizes the sovereignty and the well-being and the participation of Nigeria in international affairs. And so therefore, when he gets there, we always make the point of saying, this is why Mr. President is going. And at the end of it, we come back, we tell Nigerians, what it is that is possible in terms of that which can be achieved. I assure you that there is no frivolity in all of these things. There is a purpose for all of these things. And if Nigeria would choose to stay away from the international community, lock its doors and say, President, don't go anywhere. We are not any less than North Korea. Certainly, you become a pariah nation. That's not who we are. Right. So uh, just to further justify uh, some of these trips, uh, and I can see that you've been seeing some reports which you, you've tried to, uh, write, tried to respond to, I mean, in, in, in your response. Just to further justify some of the president's trip for the benefit of those who ask time and again that what is Nigeria gaining, tangible or intangible? So from the list, uh, the about eight trips I listed, if you could just pick one and tell Nigerians one of the tangible or intangible outcomes of that trip, perhaps to the economy, me, which we can see right now, to security, which can see right now, or some other sectors uh, of, of the nation's life? Okay. In, in South Africa, where the president was there to participate in the African trade fair, you know that uh, this is coming uh, in the context of uh, the take of formation of the continental free trade area, the largest trade uh, agreement, uh, free trade agreement anywhere in the world. Nigeria participated in the last one in Cairo, Egypt. Nigerian businesses logged in. They clocked in businesses worth more than 3 billion US dollars. Now, when we went to South Africa, the hope it was the numbers that we, we clinched this year shall exceed that which happened even the enthusiasm of Nigeria businesses, the numbers in which they were represented, we are expecting something bigger than that. And I'm sure that at the appropriate time, the Ministry of Trade and Investment will put together figures and give Nigerians the outcomes. That's why they are there. So uh, the last time the Turkish president uh, came to Nigeria, uh, he spoke about some suspected terrorist group uh, who were said to have carried out the failed coup in Turkey. And that got a lot of people alarmed, thinking... Wait a minute, is that here in Nigeria? Saying they are very active here in Nigeria. So I wonder what's the government doing, that's the Nigerian government doing regarding that, because they talked about sharing intelligence. So what are we doing regarding that? It's an issue that uh, has been there for some time, and uh, it's undercurrents have been there in, in our relations. And uh, the administration of President Muhammad Buhari has been acting as a as a as a as a as a as a true member of the international community. Uh, we have our responsibilities under the international system, and uh, in addition to that, of course, when you are calling people to come and invest in your economy, uh, you can't be found expelling. Business is a difficult decision to to make. Now, let me say to you that the important thing about this engagement that we just finished from Turkey is that apparently, from my own understanding, the common ground has been achieved between Nigeria and Turkey, and uh, assurances have been given over and over again. Nigerian government will not allow our territory to be used for subversive activities against Turkey. Right. And if we have any evidence that money made from Nigeria 
is being transmitted to Turkey or to any other country to cause destabilization. This government will stop that. So we think that the, 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 that, that, uh, that issue which had the potential to threaten the existing cordial relations between our two countries is, is a bit calm now. And uh, Turkey is coming back, is resuming uh, all of the things that they had planned to do, including sending another set of investors right. who will be doing education, who will be doing medicals, mm. and, uh, and, uh, and the hotel entertainment, you know, films and all of that. So we're you know, expecting quite a lot from them. And mm. uh, I think that the reassurance from our president as such that they have seemed to calm nerves down between these two right. friendly nations. You know, there will always be questions around, you know, the diplomatic issues. You know, this organization that has been designated terrorist by Turkey is not seen as the same by, for example, the EU or UK government. So there'll be questions about how Nigeria wants to play, uh, you know, through these diplomatic issues. But let's, let's move on to the big one, uh, Mr. Garbashehu, and that's the electoral bill. I mean, we have been counting down to the president's decision, and um, it would seem that deadline has just passed. So has the president made a decision yet? on the electoral bill? Uh, I, I don't want to speculate on this. What I can tell you is that uh, the president is conscious of his responsibility in this regard. Uh, he has been adequately briefed on the pros and the cons of uh, such a signature and uh, the implications for, for the nation and which is uh, foremost in his, in his own mind. Um, is there a decision by the president as we speak? I cannot tell you. I, I don't know because if the president decides upon co the completion of all his consultations, usually he would be sending a privileged communication to the National Assembly. And when such communication is privileged, it is only received by the National Assembly and on the floor of the Senate and the House of Reps. Speaker or Senate president will read to members. My assumption is that when they come back, we probably will be hearing from them. It's been 30 days and about 20 hours now uh, since the National Assembly uh, forwarded that law, well, that bill, I should say, to the president. So, I mean, according to the Constitution, which says that the president, you know, shall yeah, within I... 30 days thereof signify that he assents or that he withholds assent by the Constitution, 30 days, 20 hours. The time is up. So why don't Nigerians know yet what the president's decision is? Well, one or two things obviously is about to happen. Oh, it already has happened. Either the president has signed or has declined the uh, signature. Uh, for us, in the executive arm of the government, uh, there is a protocol governing communication with the National Assembly. Even when we know, even when we have seen it, we don't make a disclosure. The National Assembly would feel rather unkindly treated if uh, we go on the pages of the newspaper and say, this is where or what the president is saying. So please, allow time. I believe that uh, they should be in. Tuesday, we're hoping they'll be there in big numbers. They possibly would have uh, something to tell Nigerians. I don't know. I haven't seen anything and haven't been briefed. Uh, but you, you understand how big this is. I know you appreciate that. I mean, the pressure. I mean, we saw what played out on the floor of the National Assembly in the process of, you know, trying to pass this bill. You know how much, not just CSOs, but Nigerians have clamored uh, essentially for a new or an addition, an amendment to the current law we have that guides the electoral process in Nigeria. So this is a major one, a very big one. So to what gain, really, uh, will, it, will that the concealing of the president's decision serve, we should already know because the constitution is quite clear that it shall within 30 days signify that he assents or otherwise. So why keeping this under wraps? Is that the president's nature? No, uh, the thing is that I think that you are making the assumption that as we speak, there is no decision. And I'm not in a position to tell you yes or no. But uh, given the way things are done, 
the president would have completed his consultations uh, some time back. The president would be communicating with the National Assembly whatever he decides, either yes or no. And uh, as I said, it will be disrespectful of the National Assembly for me at this time to say to you, this is the content of the president's communication, assuming that the communication has been sent to them. So as I said earlier, allow them to resume. I believe that uh, the president will not act in breach of the constitution. No, he will do what is right. So indeed, you're saying that if the president, I mean, the constitution says 30 days. So if the president will be acting within the confines of the constitution, then he should have, according to the constitution, made his decision already within 30 days. Am I right? Yeah, I will ex uh, assume that if the constitution says the president must decide within 30 days, then the president will decide within 30 days. And the constitution did not say there should be a disclosure of that decision within 30 days to the public. Maybe a disclosure to the National Assembly has been made. And uh, I wish uh, this pressure would be mounted on the National Assembly. The principal officers, they probably may have received something as we speak now. Right. I don't know. Well, uh, let me just quote again uh, the Constitution. That's um, uh, four of that um, section of the Constitution that talks about, you know, the, the electra, a bill that is passed to the president. It says, where a bill is presented to the president for assent, he shall within 30 days, now I'm reading word for word, signify that he assents or that he withholds assent. So signification. doesn't say whether to the National Assembly or to the Nigerian people, but at least... I mean, the people are the ones that are anticipating this. So it's expected that a signification will be made to the people. But uh, just hold on for a moment, Mr. Sheo. Let's uh, expand this conversation, as it were. And we're joined on the program as well uh, by Mr. Debo Ologumagba, who is the PDP National Publicity uh, Secretary. Uh, Honorable Ologumagba, uh, it's good to have you on the program tonight. I mean, we've been having this conversation uh, with Mr. Garba Sheo concerning the electoral bill which was you know transmitted to the president and within the confines of the constitution the deadline has passed i mean judging by the fact that we've gone 30 days and over 20 hours how is the pdp reading this uh, honorable Ologumba, can you hear me okay well we'll try to uh, work on that one uh, mr garbacho uh, let me come back to you now so is it true indeed Okay, I understand. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Uh, Garbasheu. I understand we have Mr. Uh, Honorable Ologwangba with us. Uh, can you hear me? If you can, please go ahead, Honorable. Can, please go ahead, Honorable. Thank you very much, Kaudi. I hope you... Can you oh, hear yes. me too? Oh, yes. Loud and clear. Please go ahead. Oh, oh great. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, for me, I think uh, the, the starting line before talking about electoral bill amendment is, to, is for the PDP. And I speak for the PDP this evening and where we commiserate and condole Nigerians who have endured so much hardship and insecurity. And you just referenced a while ago in your reporting that 38 people, 38 Nigerians have been brutally murdered in the last 24 hours. I think that should be the starting point. We condole with Nigerians we have endured the colossal disappointment and the national embarrassment that this APC government has become. It is sad that we're in this, but I know that hope is on the way and Nigerians should expect a better security arrangement and safety for their lives in the new PDP government in 2023. First of all, because this is very, very profoundly important, the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people, as provided for in the Constitution, specifically Section 14, subsection 2B. If a government cannot provide security for its people, that government has no legitimacy. And that is what we have suffered in the last six to seven years from the APC government. And it is sad. It's a sad commentary for our nation, but like I said, help is on the way, hope is on the way. 
Now, I will now relate to that, to the, the pension of this government to act unconstitutionally. Now, I listened to Mr. Gerber Shehu, and it was so distressing to say that he cannot speak on whether the president has signed or withhold his assent. And I was asking, what is governance? It is to give information to the people. And the constitution is so clear. It says the president shall, the world shall, it's mandatory. Now we have a president who has kept Nigeria in limbo for 20 hours after the deadline had passed. In the same environment, that is an impeachable offense. And for the PDP, we think that it's irresponsible of any government and to keep the people in darkness. The obligation of the, of the president and the APC is to tell us if he's going to sign or he has without assent. To imagine that we can begin to guess. And he says something, which, I, which is very clear. He said, when the National Assembly resumes, come on, this is not how to run a country. And it's unfortunate that this is what we have got, we've gotten from the APC government. So for us in PDP, the president should sign, or we told his assent. And in any event, on the details of the, of the bill as, a, as relating to us, we will respond to that, particularly on the issue of direct primaries that is contained in that act. We do not believe, and I think it's unconstitutional anyway, that the legislature or the APC control legislature can determine how a party can determine how it produces its primary candidate for election. For us, the Constitution provides for freedom of association and of choice. The idea of how it becomes a candidate of a party is an internal process of a party. And there are options available. As long as a party is within and is in respect of its own constitution and is not inconsistent with the constitution of Nigeria, then it does not lie with the legislature to determine and, and prescribe a particular way of how to choose a candidate. So this is constricting democracy. And this is what the APC populated assembly is trying to do. So for us in PDP, we do not believe that the president should, or the legislature should, determine that this is how a party should elect or present its own candidate. So it is unconstitutional. So the issue of whether he, he even accent or sign the, it's not even within, it's not neither here nor there, because we do not believe in that particular way. We believe that the, the, the bill should get back to the Na National Assembly, and that provision, which is offensive, which is unconstitutional, should be expunged from the bill as it is. You will recall that the APC populated assembly, the National Assembly, had wanted to railroad Nigeria by saying that transmission of results should not take place as a unit, which is the foundation of electoral process. Now, it took the courage and the leadership of the PDP caucus to stage a workout from the assembly at the House of Representatives for the APC to begin to rework that, and that's where we have in that today a provision right. that allows for transmission. But really, with regards to direct primaries, we are not for that. We allow the parties to have the freedom as guaranteed by the Constitution. In any event, right. and we should not lose sight of all this. Well, part of this it's a whole primary, uh, direct primary, indirect primary is actually a proxy war within the APC. Okay. Because it's um, a party that is... Honorable Ologogba, pardon me. I would ask you to, to hold your thoughts for a moment. They can't agree or not. 
Uh, pardon me, I'll ask you to I hold your thoughts you. for a moment, if you can hear me. We're due for our break right now, but not to worry. I'll let you land on that point you're making, because to me, it sounds as though you're even saying, as the bill stands right now, you wouldn't want the president to ascend to it because of that direct and indirect primary provision. So, we'll explore this when we return from this break. Don't forget, Mr. Garabashew is also with us on the program tonight to give us a sense of what the president is thinking, doing, or planning to do on this electoral bill, which a lot of Nigerians are looking forward to. So we'll continue the conversation after the break, gentlemen. Plus, we'll be joined by the executive governor of River State, Governor Yesam Wike, who himself is a lawyer, to talk about this issue, as well as the state of the nation and the PDP's plan ahead of 2023. This and more in a moment. Please stay with us. Hey, welcome back. We're in our concluding moments with uh, Mr. Garba Shew, who is a senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, and the Honorable Debo Ologmagba, who is the PDP National Publicity Secretary. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for staying with us. So, uh, Honorable Ologmagba, I'll let you land on that point you were making, because it sounds to me as though you're even saying if the president were to assent to this bill, it will not go down, down well with the PDP. Am I right? Very well so. Kaudi, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for allowing me to make my thoughts and pass it across. We believe that it is within the right of parties to determine how to pro produce the primary candidate for election. And it, was, it, was, it is unconstitutional to prescribe a particular mode because under the Constitution, people and association have a right to freedom of association and choice. It is unconstitutional for the legislature to prescribe only one mode. The parties have freedom to determine how. In any event, like I said, this whole idea about direct primary, indirect, has been tried before. And we shouldn't lose sight of that. The PDP in 1999 started with the direct primary process for electing, candidate for election. And what do we find? It was almost like a nightmare because there were complaints and concerns about falsification, fraud, and so many other complaints. Right. Above all, it was deemed to be very, very expensive. Okay. And I, I think that, that point has been out. made. Uh, Honorable Olobongba. Pardon me to boit, but button, pardon me. I think that point has been made. I just wanted you to land on that so we can take uh, Mr. Shehu's uh, response to some of the points you have made as we wind down uh, in about two minutes on this one. So, uh, Mr. Garba Shehu, let's leave it on this, on this note. So, for a lot of Nigerians who are wondering, is the president taking us for granted? The time has elapsed. Why hasn't the president communicated his decision to us as Nigerians who voted uh, the president in? Earlier on, also, the PDP released a statement demanding that the president visit some of the affected areas in terms of insecurity, Kaduna, Sokoto, and the rest. And also, the PDP is saying it looks like the president might be taking Nigerians for granted. So for those who have that opinion, what do you have to say to them as we wind down? Sorry, you have to take. If you tell me again that those states you mentioned, you said he hasn't what Sokoto, well, Kaduna, and what what about yes, those states? Yes, the PDP earlier today released a statement asking the president to visit uh, some of these affected areas in terms of security, reference Kaduna, Niger, and the rest. No, I think that anybody following up on uh, our statements uh, would note that uh, we do give statements. Uh, on behalf of the president, which are sanctioned by the president. And it is interesting, of course, the new spokesperson of the PDP is even querying why Garboshe would uh, speak uh, for the president. And you wonder himself, then why is he seated in the studio also talking on behalf of the uh, PDP? People are mandated to be representative in, 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 in carrying out this duty. He's there because uh, the PDP has sent him. Otherwise, you people would have sent him back to say, go and bring your chairman. That's not the way it is done. And two, uh, but they are entitled to their opinion on the electoral bill and all of that. Right. Uh, we don't contest their position. They are entitled to hold their own opinions. But on the question of whether this should be announced on China's television, now hold him to this. He has given you an assurance that going forward, the PDP, whatever they want to do, if uh, they happen to be in the hope not, well, they will announce on China's television before they go to National Assembly. 
we wish them good luck. Well, Mr. Garabashi, well, this is certainly an ongoing conversation, but we'd like to thank you so much uh, for taking time out to speak with us, Mr. Garabashi, uh, the President's media aide, as well as Honorable Debo Olugwangba, the National Publicity Secretary of the PDP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time on the program tonight.